Hey gang, uh, this this video is for uh, Math 5500. Uh, I'm not sure any assignment question has uh, generated more conversation, concern, and sometimes even outrage than uh, question 5A parts uh, 6 and 7. And if you remember, we were examining the relationship between head uh, circumference and IQ. And... Uh, uh, part 6 wanted us to find the point estimate of the expected value when uh, the head circumference was 55. And then we wanted to uh, find the variance of the uh, predicted values. So uh, I, I'm going to illustrate that to the best I can. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get over to R. So, or maybe not. Let me see. Let me get out of here. Okay, uh, let's get over to R, and uh, you can see that I have the data entered. So um, um, I'll tell you what I want to do. Let's 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 kind of regroup here a little bit. Uh, let me bring this up and uh, do some split screen action. All right. Super cool. Now, the first thing I would do is uh, there, 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 there are two approaches to this. I would call one the, uh, the first one that I'm going to do is uh, the non-matrix approach. That's just using the, uh, the straightforward formula that I presented in uh, one of the uh, videos. And then I'm going to go through the matrix approach. And you're going to see the matrix approach is much, um, it's much cooler. And uh, it's, uh, it's more applicable when we get into multiple regression. So the very first thing I would do is I would create the model. Uh, so I'm going to create the model using LM. And I want to predict the IQ from the head circumference. I actually think this, um, this data set was from 10, uh, 10 children, but I uh, can't confirm that. So let's run summary of the model and go from there. So. Um, what I can see is my estimates are uh, 26.56 for the slope, uh, I'm sorry, for the uh, intercept, and 1.383 uh, for the estimate. So I can easily get my predicted value by taking 26.561 plus uh, 1.383 times the value, which was 55. So the predicted value is 102.63. Now the other part is a little tougher. So, so, so again, what, what we've got here is if we think about all the kids who have a circumference, hit circumference of, um, of, uh, of 55, you would expect there to be variation. This would be the average IQ, but you wouldn't expect the IQ to be the same for every single kid uh, with a head circumference of 55. You'd expect this to vary. And what we do in statistics is we allow this variation. So the variation or the variance of the predicted values for this particular h equal 55. Uh, we saw earlier that we can do that uh, by, f we can find that by calculating uh, uh, the, the mean square error times 1 over n plus the x sub h, which in our case is 55, minus the mean, quantity squared. And then really the only difficult part of this is to calculate the sum of the deviations uh, squared. Let me check. I'm working on memory here, and I don't want don't to screw up. Um, so, um, yes. By the way, I created this video last week, and uh, I got in my office today, and I realized that the video that I created is on my computer at home, so I'm putting up something real quick uh, here in the office. Um, otherwise, it would have been very, very, very simple. So what I'm going to do here, to find the mean square error, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just use R, and uh, I'm going to do uh, ANOVA for the model. And you can see that the mean square error 
Now remember the residuals represent the error, so the mean square error is 234.459. So our sample size here is 10, I do believe, yeah. And then we have to find the, the value, which is uh, what our predicted value is, uh, I'm sorry, the value we're predicting at is x equal 55. And the mean for the x's, that's going to be very easy to find. So the mean of the uh, head circumference is 55.43. Now, the only difficult part is to find the deviations. It's really not uh, difficult at all, because what we can to do is we can just, let's just call it something. It doesn't matter. Let's just call them the deviations. Uh, we just need to take our x values, which would be our head circumference, and subtract the mean for the head circumference. And I want to do the quantity squared. All right, easy stuff. Then I just want to take the sum of the deviations, and I see that I get 47.041. All right, let's get our calculator, if I can find mine. Um, so, guys, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, so 55 minus uh, 55.43 uh, squared. Uh, divided by 47.041. So this part right here, I get uh, 0.0039. So then I'm going to add uh, 0.1. And then I'm going to multiply that by 234.459. In which case, I get 24.37. Now, using that approach, uh, <laughs> I, I really feel bad that it drove some of you absolutely insane. I understand that. Sometimes it does. Uh, but, uh, you know, using the formula, I think uh, you have to agree with me that it's a pretty straightforward uh, calculation. Now, what if we bring matrices into this? And matrices make things um, much cooler, not because, we, you know, little math geeks running around doing matrices, but because um, matrices are, 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 can be generalized. Because eventually where we're headed is not the simple linear regression model like I'm uh, demonstrating right here, but we're headed to multiple regression. What happens when we try to predict IQ not only using head circumference, but what if we use mother and father's IQ, or what if we use uh, you know, I mean, a, a gender, whatever it may be. Um, so if we have multiple predictors, you can see where this could get extremely messy because we would have multiple X sub H's. So the matrix approach is uh, is much more general. Well, what I do with the matrix approach is I, is I begin with what I call my X sub H matrix. And this is just one and the value that I want to predict. In our case, it's 55. Guys, it turns out, and this is, of course, of course is a, um, uh, a two by one matrix, matrix. But it turns out that it's much better for us if we look at the transpose of this. And the transpose, of course, looks like this. So again, in our illustration, this matrix right here would be 155. It'd be a 1 by 2 matrix. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the variance. And the variance is using matrices, so we have the variance of the uh, predicted value at the x sub h, if you will, and we're going to find that by taking the mean square error times uh, the x transpose of the h, what we put it right here, uh, times a really cool matrix, well that's not really cool, but it's kind of cool, uh, uh, times x sub h. All right, so let's demonstrate that on R. So we have the mean square error, right? We found it up here. So that mean square error that we got here right here is still 234.459. So I really just need to calculate this stuff, multiply it by the scalar. But before I do that, I need to create my X matrix. 
and I need to create my x sub h transpose, or e, even my x sub h would be fine. So, um, what I want to do first, I tell you what, let's 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 create our design matrix first. So, what I know is to create my design matrix, I got to have some ones. And uh, so what I would do, I would do uh, use the repeat, and I want a bunch of ones, and I want them ten times. Now I'm going to create my design matrix, and I'm going to make that be a capital X. I'm going to have matrix, and I want to bind my ones uh, vector with my head circumference. Now I want to define the dimension of my matrix, so I want my n rows to be equal to, now I know that I want my design matrix to be a uh, 10 by 2. I want it to have 10 rows because we have 10 subjects and 2 columns because I have my 1s and I have my values for the head circumference. So my number of rows I want to be 10. Uh, in column I want to be 2. And I don't want these taken by rows, so I'm going to put that to be equal to false. Um, okay, cool. C bind is not Build. That should be C bind. All right, cool. So now we look at our X, and it's exactly what we need. Now we need to create uh, the Y matrix. No, we don't either, do we? No, and this we don't. I, I'm, on, I'm, I'm on autopilot. We don't need the Y matrix. I usually go ahead and create it, but uh, I don't. Now, what I want to do with the XH is I want to uh, create my XH matrix. And uh, I'm going to use the matrix again, but here I want to do uh, the C, and I want 1, 55. Now, this is not the transpose, okay? So my n number of rows would be equal to 2, n column will be equal to 1, and by row equals false. So just check that we have our XH the way that it should be. And again, if we transpose, just use uh, T of uh, XH. So now, where are we headed with this? Um, first of all, let's just show that um, to, uh, to get the predicted value, let me uh, get over here. All right, guys, well, as fate would have it, my computer crashed because I uh, failed to plug in the, the cord. But anyway, I think where we were at last uh, I'm going to try to take off where we were. Uh, we were um, looking at the predicted value for 55 using um, uh, matrices. And uh, we know that the uh, predicted value for a uh, particular value H, which in our case is 55, is to take the X transpose uh, of the H uh, at the H value uh, times beta. So guys, what we'll need to do here, obviously, is we need to create uh, the, um, to, to create beta. So uh, to do that, I need to create my y uh, vector. So I'm going to do that very quickly. So I Q, and I want in row with a sample size of 10, and in column to be equal to 1, and by row equal false. All right. So uh, we know that uh, the beta is um, what, x transpose x inverse x transpose times y. So that's the reason I needed my y. So let's, uh, let's pop that out real quick. So um, uh, let's create this as beta. So I need solve transpose x x um, x, y. All right, so beta is uh, the values that we had before. So what I can do now is use matrices to find my uh, predicted value for 55. So I'm going to use this. So x transpose h. Uh, so h uh, beta. And you can see we get 102.60 uh, as before. I don't know why, but my, uh, my uh, printer is uh, going crazy on me. Now, uh, let's switch focus 
uh, to come up with uh, with the variants. Uh, and again, you know, every kid with 55 uh, wouldn't have the same uh, IQ. Head circumference, head circumference of 55 wouldn't have the same. So uh, if we can manipulate this, which we should be able to do very, very easily, I'm going to do this in steps, and I'm going to call this, when well, J can be something else. So I'm just going to call it uh, my QQ matrix, all right, because i got nothing else. So I'm going to create this part. So I'm going to take the transpose of XH, and I'm going to... Uh, X, X, and then I go times uh, just X, H, right? So now if I can take my mean square error, which was 234.459, uh, uh, times my QQ, you'll see that I get 24.36, just as we did uh, somewhere before, yeah, yeah, right here, there it is. So guys, I genuinely apologize for the confusion. Maybe I didn't do a good enough job teaching this um, in the other videos. Um, I, I have learned one thing from teaching this class. I hadn't taught 5,500, well, I take that back. I taught it last summer. But uh, uh, there, there's some things in the videos that really need to be uh, improved, and that's going to be um, uh, something I'm going to focus on. Uh, this fall. So uh, thanks for your feedback. Uh, I do appreciate it. So again, general, genuinely uh, apologetic uh, for not being crystal clear. I think I was actually crystal clear on this part. I don't think I was uh, on this part here. All right. Take care.